I saw you yesterday as you began your daily chores. You awoke without kneeling to pray. As a matter of fact, you didn't even bless your meals. Or pray before going to bed last night. You are so unthankful. I like that about you. I cannot tell you how glad I am that you have not changed your way of living. Fool. You are mine. Remember, you and I have been going steady for years. And I still don't love you yet. As a matter of fact, I hate you. Because I hate God. He kicked me out of heaven. And I'm going to use you as long as possible to pay him back. You see, fool, God loves you. And he has great plans in store for you. But you have yielded your life to me. And I'm going to make your life a living hell. That way we'll be together twice. This will really hurt God. Thanks to you, I'm really showing him who's boss in your life with all the good times we've had. Why, we've been watching dirty movies, cursing people, stealing, lying, being hypocritical, fornicating, overeating, telling dirty jokes, gossiping, being judgmental, backstabbing people, disrespecting adults and those in leadership positions. Oh, surely you don't want to give all this up. Come on, fool. Let's burn together forever. Oh, I've got some hot plans for us. This is just a letter of appreciation from me to you. I'd like to say thanks for letting me use you for most of your foolish life. Oh, you're so gullible. I laugh at you. When you are tempted to sin, you give in. You make me sick. Sin is beginning to take its toll on your life. You look 20 years older, and now I need new blood. So go ahead and teach some children how to sin. All you have to do is, you know, get drunk, drink while well underage, cheat, gamble, gossip, fornicate, and live being as selfish as possible. Now do all of this in the presence of children to kids are like that. Well, fool, I have to let you go for now. I'll be back in a couple seconds to tempt you again. Now, if you were smart, you would run somewhere, confess your sins, and live for God with what little life you have left. Oh, it's not my nature to warn anyone, but to be your age is still sinning. It's becoming a bit Oh, don't get me wrong. I still hate you. It's just that you'd make a better fool for Christ. Yes, if you love me, you won't share this. I know someone who has got uh, a major problem with addiction. Quite a close friend. And they've had multiple addiction problems at various times. Uh, a lot of problems with cocaine. But more uh, specifically with alcohol, a lot of, lot of alcohol problems. They're not drinking right now, but a lot of the behaviour is still very similar to how it was when they were drinking and when they were still using quite a bit. Uh, if I think it's got a name, it's referred to as a dry drunk, I think, the actual pattern of behaviour that uh, that occurs that's very similar to, to behaviour that's, well, yeah. Uh, I've done quite a bit of research about alcoholism and, uh, and, and in fact the only strategy I found for making those kind of predictions and having that kind of coherent structure for understanding the, be the alcoholic behaviour is one that sounds mad when I think about it but it's very, at least for me, it's quite powerful and this is a kind of possession model I mean no one talks about possession or takes the idea of possession seriously I think quite rightly so but, um, but just as a model the idea of alcoholism as a form of possession by some kind of spirit 
works enormously well for me, actually. And uh, as I say, it gives it protective power. Dark dreams. <laughs> 